Hello, sports fans and baseball fans and even White Sox fans out there. I am here with your White Sox recap like I am every Sunday. Sportsman Z's White Sox recap. And this week we're recapping the week that the White Sox had from July 25th through July 31st. So, uh, the week started out. Now, this was also the week of the trade deadline. And we'll touch on those a little bit. But, I do have two other videos that I will link to in the um, end screen for my uh, recap of the uh, White Sox trades. But I will quickly touch on them in this video. So, anyway... Uh, the week started July 25th, White Sox at Brewers. This was Lance Lynn versus Woodruff. And the White Sox come in 58 and 40. And uh, the White Sox uh, ended up winning this game against the Brewers, which was a good sign because we do need to start beating good teams. Zavala was one for three with an RBI for the White Sox. Lynn was one for two with two RBIs. And Lynn got the win. He went six. He allowed six hits and only one earned run. For the Brewers, Jackie Bradley Jr. was really the only quasi-offensive star, and he was two for four with an RBI. Woodruff got the loss. He went seven. He allowed three runs. Hendricks picked up his 24th save with two innings and no earned runs. And uh, the White Sox improved to 59 and 40 with that win and 1 and 0 for the week. Week got off to a nice start. July 26, and this was the game that Jimenez come, came back off the IL, so it was nice to see him back. Um, the White Sox at Royals was this game. Keuchel versus Mike Miner. And uh, the White Sox came in 59-40 and 40 and 1-0 and on the week, as I just said, with the game ending uh, against the Brewers. For the White Sox, Engel was 2-for-4 with an RBI. Vaughn was 1-for-4 with two RBIs. But Keuchel picks up the loss. The White Sox end up losing this game. And uh, he, Keuchel went 6. He allowed 6 hits and 4 earned runs. Keuchel really is one of, he's he's one of those pitchers that's doing the same thing that a lot of the relievers do he throws the ball out of the strike zone and he hopes for the batters to swing at it out of the strike zone and i think that there's enough tape out there on him now that everybody's on to that so we're going to have to i mean he has his good games but we're going to have to see what happens with that going forward um, for the Royals, uh, Soler was two for four with two homers and two RBIs, and Benintendi was two for four with a homer and one RBI. Miner got the win. He went six. He allowed uh, three hits and two earned runs. And Barlow got the save, his sixth of the year, going two innings, allowing two hits and one earned run. Uh, Jimenez, in his debut, his season debut off the uh, IL, was 0 for four. The White Sox fall to 29 and 41 with this, and they go to 1 and 1 on the week. Then we had the second game against the Royals for the week. This was Cease versus uh, Brad Keller. The White Sox come in at 59 and 41, and 1 and 1 for the week. And we end up winning this game 5 3. And, uh, and that was on a Jimenez home run. So that was nice fireworks for the for Jimenez trying to get back into the swing of things after coming off the IL. For the White Sox, Jimenez was two for four. He had a home run and three RBIs. Sheets was one for three with a homer and an RBI. For the Royals, Benintendi was two for four offensively. O'Hearn was one for three with an RBI, and Dozier was one for one with an RBI. The win uh, went to Lopez, but uh, he pitched one inning and allowed no runs. Cease, who started the game, pitched six innings, allowed six hits and three runs. Two were earned. 
Hendricks got his 25th save for one inning and no earned runs. Keller pitched seven and allowed four hits and one earned run, but he didn't get a decision in this. The loser in this game was Kyle Zimmer, who got a loss for a third of an inning, one hit, two earned runs. And with that, the White Sox improved to 60 and 41 and 2 and 1 for the week. So then we go to July 28th. This is the White Sox at the Royals. Giolito versus Bubich. And um, the White Sox come in 60 and 41, 2 and 1 for the week. And we lose this game 3 to 2. In 10 innings. And this isn't like the NHL. You don't get a point. You don't get any brownie points for losing. So the White Sox, uh, Vaughn was 2 for 3. Mendick was 1 for 3 with an RBI. Giolito went 6. He allowed 4 hits and 1 earned run. And Burr got the loss. He went 2 thirds of an inning, 1 hit, 0 earned runs. Probably because it was the uh, guy on second that scored. That phantom guy that they just decide to put on second, which is a stupid rule, as I've said before. For the Royals, Perez is 2 for 4 with a home run and an RBI. Soler was 1 for 3 with an RBI. And Michael Taylor was 1 for 4 with an RBI. Bubich pitched 6. He allowed 5 hits, 2 earned runs. Barlow ends up with the win. And he goes, uh, and he gave, and he gave up zero uh, runs. The White Sox dropped to sixty and forty-two, and only two and two on the week at this point. And that brings us to July 29th, which I believe was the trade deadline day. Um, the White Sox at the Royals, Rodon versus Hernandez. The White Sox come in at sixty and forty-two, and two and two for the week. And we lose 5 nothing, 5 nothing, Whitewashed. Uh, Rodon, there was no offensive stars for the White Sox. Rodon got the loss. He went four. He allowed eight hits and four earned runs. For the Royals, offensively, Carlos Santana was two for three. Perez was two for four with a homer and two RBIs. Dozier was one for three with an RBI. And Michael Taylor was one for two with a homer and two RBIs. Hernandez picks up the win. He goes six. He allows four uh, four hits and zero earned runs. And the White Sox drop to 60 and 43. Two and three on the week. Um, and uh, really quickly, in the uh, at the trade deadline, we picked up um, the uh, we picked up Tapera from the Cubs, and we also got their uh, closer. So anyway, and then uh, we also picked up uh, Hernandez from the Indians. So his, their second baseman. So, uh, and he's, uh, he's a good pickup. Uh, we did need some second base help and we definitely needed uh, bullpen help. Um, so that was that was good that we got the uh, the two um, two relief pitchers from the Cubs. I can't think of the second guy's name. I hate this. I hate this. My mind is just going to mush. So uh, yeah, I know Tapera was one of them, and then the other one was the closer, but I can't think of his name again. So anyway, um, probably going to write it down there along the screen. So the next one we had was the uh, July 30th game, Indians at White Sox. This was J.C. Mejia versus Lance Lynn. And this was a good game, very entertaining. The White Sox came in 60-43 and 43 and 2-3 and three for the week. And they were 8 up on the Indians because this is a crucial series. We have to win. Uh, it would be great if we could win at least 2 out of 3. You'd like to see a sweep, but... Um, the Indians are a pesky team, though. Sweeping them is difficult. But it would be great if we could take two of these, you would think. The top of the first, the first two Indians singled, and there were runners at the corners, Zimmer and Rosario. Ramirez was hit by a pitch, and that loaded the bases with no outs. Then Reyes singled up the middle, and it was 2 nothing Indians, just like that. 
Ramirez was thrown out at third, though, on a hit, and that was the first out. Then Harold Ramirez struck out. That was the second out. And then Johnson struck out. So they got the Indians got two quick runs there in the first and were leading 2-0 after a half inning. Bottom of the second, Moncada hit a leadoff homer when Zimmer and Johnson crashed into one another going for the ball, and they knocked it over the wall in the act of crashing into each other. It was very entertaining. Probably not for those two, but for any White Sox fans it was. So it was 2-1 to one Indians at that point. Then in the bottom of the fourth, after one out, Moncada singled, Vaughn walked, Goodwin singled Moncada home, and it was 2-2 with runners at the corners. Garcia grounds into a fielder's choice, which scores Vaughn in its 3-2 socks. And then Sabi Zavala struck out. So it was 3-2 socks after four. Top of the fifth, Zimmer single and stole second. After the second out, Jose Ramirez singled Zimmer home, and it was a 3-3 tie. We go to the top of the fifth. After one out, Hernandez singled. Abreu walked, Sheets walked, and the bases were loaded with one out. Mejia was relieved by Blake Parker. Moncada struck out, and there was two outs. Then Vaughn walked, forcing in a run, and it was 4-3 Sox. Goodwin struck out, but uh, barely missed a grand slam by hitting a long fly just uh, to the wrong side of the foul pole, the right field foul pole. So... <coughs> The, uh, that was, uh, man, I was like, ah, wish we had had that. But anyway, I mean, at that point, you know, you don't know how the game's going to turn out. So that could have been critical. Top of the sixth, Crochet is on in relief of Lynn. Bottom of the sixth, Nick Sandlin is on for Parker to pitch. Nothing really happens. Top of the seventh, Aaron Bummer is on for Crochet. Nothing really happens. Um, bottom of the seventh, Brian Shaw is on in relief of Sandlin. And with one out, Sheets singles. Moncada singles, and runners are at first and second. And then Vaughn singled, but Sheets was thrown out at the plate. So at that point, you're thinking, wow, wow, wow. We really needed a run in that inning. Or at least since, again, you don't know the final result of the game, you're thinking that. Top of the eighth, Tapera is on in relief of Bummer in his first Sox appearance, but he fails to get anybody out, and the bases are loaded. Uh, then Fran, Fran Meal, Reyes homered. Oh, wait a minute. No, okay, he failed to get anybody out. Fran Meal, Reyes homered. Harold Ramirez singled. Mercado walked, and then they took him out. Ruiz came on in relief of Tapera. Perez bunted runners to second and third. There was one out. Chang struck out. There was two out. And then Clement flew out. So it was 4-4 through seven and a half innings. Then we go to the bottom of the eighth. And Karen Chak is on in to pitch for Cleveland, relieving Shaw. Garcia is on by an error by Rosario, the shortstop. Pass ball allows Garcia to go to second base. A throwing error by Perez trying to pick Garcia off allows Garcia to go to third. And then Zavala, who was trying to bunt this whole time, was pinch hit for by Zach Collins. Collins walked and the runners were at the corners infield in for the Indians. T.A. singles Garcia home and it's 5-4 Sox, runners at first and second. Hernandez bunted for a base hit and the bases were loaded. Then Abreu was hit in the helmet by Karen Chak by a 99 mile an hour fastball and it was 6-4 Sox. The benches cleared after that. Abreu stayed in the game, amazingly. Karen Chak was ejected from the game and was replaced by Nick Whitgren with the bases loaded and no outs. Then Sheets struck out, Moncada struck out, and Hamilton struck out. So it's 6-4 Sox after eight innings. Top of the ninth, Hendricks is on in relief for the Sox, and the Indians fail to score. The Sox go on to win the game, and they go on to a record of 61 and 43, three and three this week, and that also puts them nine up on the tribe. 
So, Cleveland at Chicago, July 31st. This game is very entertaining, and as I'm recording this, I'm assuming the White Sox lost the game. So, we'll see what happens with that. But, um, I, was, I watched, I've taken notes through the 7th, and it became apparent to me that they weren't going to win. Uh, this was McKenzie versus Keuchel. The White Sox come in 61-43 and 43 and 3-3 three and three for the week. And 9 up on the Indians in the Central Division. The, the bottom of the second home run by Goodwin gives the Sox a 1-0 lead after two innings. Bottom of the third. This was a very entertaining game, especially for C.B. Zavala, if you're a C.B. Zavala fan. Zavala homered to give the Sox a 2-0 lead. And foreshadowing, he wasn't done. Top of the fourth, Rosario homered to left field, and it's 2-1 Sox. Bottom of the fourth, leadoff double for Gavin Sheets. Moncada flew out, Vaughn flew out. Then Goodwin walked, and there was a man on first and second with two out. Engel walked on four pitches, and the bases were loaded with two outs, and C.B. Zavala comes up. And I'm thinking to myself, La Russa, come on, man. You can't let C.B. Zavala hit in this situation. We need runs. Well, we got him because C.B. Zavala hit a grand salami. Two for two, first two plate appearances in this game, and two home runs. Those were also the first two home runs of his career. So at that point, it's 6-1 Sox, and I'm doing a dance. But I stopped dancing pretty quickly. Top of the fifth, Owen Miller hits a, uh, a one-out solo home run, and it's 6-2 Sox. Then Austin Hedges homered, and it's 6-3 Sox. You can see the, you know, you can see the slow unraveling here. Um, top, bo bottom of the fifth, Justin Garcia on in relief of McKenzie, but nothing much happens. Top of the sixth, Rosario singled, and after one out, Fran, uh, Fran Mil Reyes doubled Rosario home, and it's 6-4 Sox. Kopech is on to relieve Keuchel. Mercado doubled Reyes home, and it's 6-5 Sox. Unraveling. Then you got Miller walked, and Hedges singled Mercado home, and it's 6-6. And by the way, a lot of these hitters, Owen Miller, Hedges, terrible hitters. Terrible. And they're getting key hits. Miller and Hedges both score on a fly ball error by Goodwin, and it's 8-6 Indians. Now, I don't know if they actually called that a base hit or an error, but I'm calling it an error because Goodwin went back to the wall, he jumped, he got his glove on the ball, and it hit off the heel of his glove and uh, fell to the ground. In my book, it's an error, but it, they may have called it a hit. I don't know. Um, Miles Straw was the ninth batter of the inning, but he flew out, and then that was that. But it was 8-6 Indians at this point. Top of the seventh, Rosario got a leadoff double. Then uh, Jose Ramirez singled, and runners were at the corners with no outs. Then Ramirez stole second, and runners were at second and third with no outs. Reyes struck out. Then they brought in Tapera to relieve Kopech. Harold Ramirez doubled Rosario and Ramirez home, and it's 10-6 Indians. I got to say, I am really not that impressed by um, Tapera so far. Kimbrel. All right, there we go. Kimbrel's the other guy we got from the Cubs. Uh, haven't seen him yet. Uh, bottom of the seventh, Zavala hit his third homer of the night. Third homer. Three for three, three home runs. Six RBIs, and it was 10-7 Indians. Then T.A. doubled. Then Hernandez singled, and runners were at the corners with no outs. Then Abreu was on by an error. T.A. scores, and it's 10-8 Indians. And you're thinking, all right, cool. Maybe we're coming back. Then Sheets lines out to right field. Nick Sandlin's on in relief of Shaw. Moncada flew out to left, and then Vaughn struck out. Top of the eighth, Ruiz, Ruiz is on in relief of Tapera, and uh, things fall apart there in the eighth. started to really fall apart, so I'm going to assume, like I said, I don't know how that game ended as I'm recording this, but I'm assuming we lost, which means that we had a three and four week, 
And so far, we're one and one against the Indians in that three-game series that um, ended the week and is going to start with uh, the next week with the third game of the series. We really need to win that game. But the issues keep ha they the issues we've had they keep happening. the The bullpen comes in and we're usually in trouble when the bullpen comes in. I mean, if you could see my notes on the uh, the second Indians game. It's like the the first few innings, it's just nothing, home run, nothing, solo home run. Just one-liners, really quick, right through the innings. But then in the late innings, everything unravels, and the team just gets their asses handed to them. So the bullpen is really, it continues to be a bugaboo. And they, they've got to do something about it. The pitching coach, uh, Ethan Katz, got to talk to these guys. You got to stop, and you know, and and in the case with Keuchel, you got to stop throwing the ball out of the strike zone and hoping that people are going to swing at it because there's film on that type of thing. People are going to know that's what you're trying to do, and they're just going to, you know, they're going to be more selective, and they're not going to swing at pitches that are out of the strike zone. More and more, that's going to happen. You got to go in. You got to attack the strike zone, like Kimbrel will, like um, like Hendricks does, Kopech does. Although Kopech in this uh, last game of the week really didn't have good stuff. He actually um, did not pitch well. So, um, but at least he goes after the hitters and he attacks them. So that's going to be that's a bugaboo right now, but. We're still, assuming we actually did lose that game, we're still eight up on the Indians going into one more game against the Indians on Sunday, which hopefully we will win. And, uh, and if we do, we'll come out of that series with the Indians nine up on them with about 57 games left to play. So we will see how that goes. In the coming weeks, I'm going to start playing my uh, game that I like to play when we do, um, when when I talk about teams coming down the stretch, how many games are left, how many games up are you, what does that mean if you go 500, what does the other team have to do, what does that mean if you play 450 ball, what does the other team have to do to catch you. So we're going to start playing that in a few weeks. Um, it's always a nice, interesting game to play. Uh, right now, it's a little too far out to do that because there's still a ton of games left. But um, it's still nice to see the only team that really has a prayer of catching us is the Indians. I don't think they're going to, but it's nice to see that they're the only one with a chance. And no matter how many people that they trade off, like they gave us Cesar Hernandez, which made us better and them a little worse. But no matter how many guys they lose, no matter how many guys they have on the IL, it just seems like they're they're just a scrappy team that refuses to go away. They're like the Terminator. So anyway, we're gonna have to see what happens with that. But I think we're you know, I'm I'm pretty sure we'll stay ahead of them. But I mean, these scrappy teams that just won't go away. It's, it's really a stick in our craw. So anyway, what do you guys think? What do you think the White Sox issue is? Did you think they did well enough at the trade deadline? Do you think they should have done more? Um, yeah, I'd be interested to hear what you th what you think. And by the way, these last few these last couple of games, Jimenez wasn't playing because he was injured again, something with a groin or something. So um, I don't think it's serious because uh, I think he's still on the roster, the active roster, but. I mean, these injuries is really what's holding us back. But let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Leave a comment below. The comments help. Uh, you know, increases my footprint on um, or something in the algorithm for YouTube. And let's get more than 12 viewers because that's what my last video got. My last White Sox recap got 12. 12 views. So let's try to do better than that this time. But that's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.